Let's practice some pivot tables in Excel 2013. Now you can actually download this pivot table dot s x l s x from hoodenkim dot com slash share. So you can find if you visit here, you can actually download the pivot table uh, by type in, typing in ta pivot table dash table dot s x l s x. So this is the actual website address. All right. Now that you have this pivot table, we go to insert and you go to pivot table. This is a very powerful feature in Excel and it's used a lot by accountants. So the pivot table, the data range is going to be my actual table. You can just confirm that it's all highlighted. Notice how pivot table information almost repeats. So the idea of a salesperson, uh, Karen Lee, has a number of transactions. She made a sale in India and uh, that's the region that uh, she's sold it to whereas the uh, account number is just like a transaction number. There's the amounts for each month each sale is made. Okay so we have the actual table. We're gonna click on new worksheet. Click on OK. And once you click on OK, you can see that we created a new sheet and we see some pivot table fields on the right. Now if I click everything, what ends up happening is you get all that information summarized in a very complicated table. But the nice thing about pivot tables is that you can actually choose just the information you're thinking about. So for example, if all I'm interested in is how each salesperson did, I'm going to unclick on country, account, and month. And you can see that uh, Cindy Edwards has um, made $3,700 in sales, whereas <clears throat> other salespeople made either more or less. Now the nice thing about pivot tables is not only can you not only can you see this information, you can also hit the drop down box and sort things. So if I sort more sort options, you can even sort by uh, descending by the sum of the order amount. So click on OK. Now you can see who the top salespeople are. Charlie Nigra deserves some Employee of the Month award. And this is the way it goes. And depending on your philosophy of, of uh, who you should fire, maybe this person needs to be let go. All right, let's... Uh, what if we want to show the actual month? You can see now we see each salesperson's performance for each month. Now the, the nice thing about pivot tables is we see this information in either rows or columns. So when I click on the month and I drag it to the columns, you can see that the look and feel and organization of your pivot table changes. So now we see the, the month in the actual columns and you can see how each salesperson did. Now if I were to drag the month back to rows and drag the salesperson back to the columns, you can see that the information is just organized in a slightly different manner. And it really takes a lot of practice playing with these options. If I chose country and I don't, I'm not worried about the salesperson, I just want to know how each country did, you can just focus on the country and the order amount and you can see that we can sort we can sort by the descending sum of order of order amount and if the question is which country did the best in terms of business we can see that china had the most business so these kind of analytical questions can be very useful for um, uh, making business decisions that's why pivot tables are so powerful it really takes a lot of practice to be able to uh, uh, play around dragging information between rows and columns, playing around with uh, your filtering and sorting of your, uh, your, your sorting options. And I should conclude by saying that pivot tables are possible when you have uh, detailed uh, logs of uh, each transaction. When you keep track of 
the salesperson, the country, the order amount, the month, and all these transactions in detail, um, Excel can crunch out this information and display it in a more logical and summarized and analytical way.